Welcome back. Brian McCart has got what's trending for us next. All right, uh, very good morning to you and Kigut. Morning. Hey, Kigut 100. Let's <laughs> take a look at some of the uh, trending stories this morning. And Nigerians will not be hearing the videos if and fall henceforth after the federal government of Nigeria through the National Broadcasting Corporation banned the two songs. The reason for banning the videos two songs that is if and fail is yet to be communicated. Other songs banned by the Nigerian government include Olamide's War and Wavy Level and Living Things by Nice. This comes a few days after Nigeria's Federal Ministry of Health openly aired its displeasure about visuals to Olamide's War. In, the opinion, in their opinion, that is, the video uh, portrays a bad message that encourages second-hand smoking. The ministry tweeted, and I quote, the public is informed of the dangerous public health content and violation of Tobacco Control Act 2015 by Olomide. The Nigerian government gesture shows the National Broadcasting Corporation resolves to sanitize the lyrical content and visuals of Nigerian music. For those who do not know uh, the video song known as Fallen If, let's listen in a bit. My money, my body, now your own, oh baby. Make it a million for the account, yo. Yeah. Versace and Gucci for your body, oh baby. Don't you, don't you, don't you, gotta, gotta for me. Don't you, don't you, don't you, gotta, gotta for me. My number one in Tutu CP Bruku Tutu Alright, uh, that is Davido's song and our camera person team is saying Wame bani ngoma na vile ikopoa Apparently it's because of the lyrics uh, That's one of the reasons as to why the song probably was banned by the Nigerian federal government Alright, and on to another story Kenyan gospel singer Papa Dennis has been receiving a backlash on social media after he recently took to Facebook to floss thousands of shillings in his possession. Papa Dennis uh, sprayed on a table several thousand shilling notes and can be seen counting the money in the company of an unidentified woman. Papa Dennis fans criticized his stunt with many pointing out that there were better methods he would have used to count his money without necessarily involving the public. A fan suggested that Papa Dennis should have, broke, uh, should have taken the money to bank where it would have been easily counted and safely stored. The and uh, Papa Denny is seemingly annoyed by that suggestion, but that particular fan told off the fan saying that he was successful, hence should not be criticized. Let's take a look at, uh, at that particular video of Papa Dennis counting his cash, which he says is around 20 million shillings, though so he could not substantiate that. All right, uh, the video has just uh, been played on your screens right there of Papa Dennis counting his money and still on to matters artist. Damod Platinum's father Abdul Juma now wants the singer to marry Tanzanian model and video vixen Hamisa Mobeto. Mobeto is alleged to have given birth to a baby boy sired by Damod Platinum's and Mr. Juma believes Damon is actually the father of Mobeto's son. He now wants Damon to marry Mobeto alongside the singer's partner that is Zari Hassan. Damon's dad made his wish known on Tanzania's Clouds TV. Damon Platinum's however has refuted the reports linking him to Mobeto, saying the model is seeking publicity by naming her son Nasib Abdul, which is Damon Platinum's real name. Mobeto featured as a video vixen on Damon Platinum's top song known as Unante Kenyango Kinyonga Salome. Alright, probably Damon Platinum's will end up with two wives, that is if he heeds to his father's uh, advice. But again, he loves Zari too much and he recently took to social media to counter those claims that he is only a one man, one woman kind of person. So we can wait and see how the drama unfolds. And still on, on to Matthew's Tanzanians again. A Tanzanian singer Saida Karoli claims her life is in danger after a man who she says was sent to kill her made the confession. Saida Karoli suspects that people who are unhappy with an irrepressible comeback in the music industry are behind her death plot. She says a man who had been contracted to kill her confessed to her that he had received a payment to assassinate her. Speaking to EATV, Caroli said, and I quote, the man said he had been ordered to eliminate me even before I reached Mwanza. I was headed for a performance in Mwanza at the time. I had to cancel the concert out of 
Sia Karoli has reported the death threats to the police. For those who do not know Saida Karoli, she was a big name back in the mid 2000 and early 2000 with the song Maria Salome. Let's listen in a bit to this song. <laughs> All right, uh, that is uh, Saida Karoli saying Maria Salome. The song was a top hit back in mid-2000 and early 2000. And I remember when Saida Karoli came to Kenya some uh, four or five months ago, I had an exclusive interview with her, and she said that she is not dating and would really love a Kenyan man for a husband because Kenyan men are at working and they know how to take care of women. I don't know how true uh, that uh, statement is, but again, our Kenyan women can tell us better. We'll have that conversation offline with the Kenyan ladies and just get to understand the dynamics of the relationship in today's society, especially in this country of ours. All right, and moving on to some other bit uh, sad and interesting story. An automatic soap dispenser has packed a heated debate on Twitter after it was filmed dispensing soap to a light-skinned man, but not to a man with a darker skin tone. The video posted by a Twitter user on August 16th first shows a man with a light skin tone putting his hand forward and the dispenser spatting soap into his hand. Then a man with a darker skin tone is seen putting his hand forward. Only this time the dispenser doesn't spat soap out. Let us watch the video. I understand they are saying black man problems right there, but that is just not right. If I can engage Anne Kiguta in this. Uh, uh, Kiguta 100, what do you think of that dispenser? I have no thoughts regarding it. I, I, have, I, I don't even know what to make of it. Uh, it may be one of the censors. Perhaps it may be a sensor issue, but I, I, I really don't know what to say about that. What do you think that is? <laughs> I don't know the technology they probably use. Yeah, it may be a sensor issue, I, 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 if I was to imagine. That's just bizarre. And actually you can hear some people in the background laughing when the black uh, person puts his hand forward and the dispenser does not spat out any soap. It just shows us that in this world still we're dealing with some problems of the past which includes racism and we hope racist dispensers racist dispenser imagine that what next will we be having uh, to show the racist uh, culture that is still is actually very prominent and I, I don't know that we should make it a, out there among people. I, I mean, it's know. bizarre, but I don't think we should make it a big deal. That that that, that really just appears to be. That, that may be a problem with the technology, really. And I hope when they embark on making even better and bigger technologies, they put into consideration the black people and treat them as equals in this world where people are really struggling to find equality and fight for equity at the same time. All right, and on to my final story. News that Jay-Z and Beyonce have purchased a 30,000 square foot mansion in Los Angeles, Bel Air neighborhood uh, for 9.1 for 9 billion shillings has taken the internet by storm. Beyonce and Jay-Z actually started uh, looking for that house that is hunting for the house sometime back in 2016 and they have reportedly paid uh, 5.8 billion shillings using a mortgage and now the house is fully there to their disposal. If we can take a look at some of the uh, luxurious features that that particular house has. Places to crash for the night, including a guest house and six bedrooms in the main house. The master suite has its own deck, a spa, and a $65,000 bed. And after an all-nighter, a dip in the 65-foot limestone infinity pool will wake you right up. This $25 million Bel Air Mant, the Mega Homes private spa, has a pedicure chair and a hair salon. On the lower level, you can grab a drink at the bar, 
enjoy a fine wine from the 650 bottle cellar, or kick back with a Cohiba in the cigar room with a rolling table worth 15 k Partygoers can lounge on Lux custom couches that cost over 20 grand a piece. There's your choice of places to crash for the night, including a guest house and six bedrooms in the main house. The master suite has its own deck, a spa, and a $65,000 bed. And after an all- Wow. Now that is what uh, 9.1 billion Kenyan shillings can get you a six bedroom maisonette. And it is actually the most expensive house in Los Angeles ca currently. A record that was previously held by Tom Ford whose house cost 8.8 .8 .8 billion Kenyan shillings. And I remember some time back airing a story about Beyonce. And Beyonce and Jay-Z are actually paying their house helps. That is six house helps. Each house receives around 880,000 Kenyan shillings a month. And at the end of their one-year contract, all of them will ho walk home with a collective 64 million Kenyan shillings. That's around 10 million per house help after one year. It shows you how much the super... Uh, power, that is the power couple, sorry, Beyonce and Jay-Z are out there and they don't fear spending a dime. But that explains why their net worth is around 120 billion Kenyan shillings collectively. Wow. Hmm. Those are fast world, uh, <laughs> I don't want to call them uh, problems, but again, those are fast world uh, intrigues right there from uh, the Beyonce and Jay-Z pair. And that story from the United States of America of the power couple Jay-Z and Beyonce brings me to the end of Trends and Entertainment segment. My name is Brian, of course. Always a pleasure talking to you. For more entertainment news, log on to www.edaily.co.ke and follow the same platform at eDaily Kenya on Telegram, Twitter, and Facebook. My Twitter handle is at real Brian, of course. And let's continue the conversation there. Meanwhile, I hand you back to Kigoot 100. <laughs> Kigoot 100, that's a new one. All right, thank you. Thanks, Brian. Thanks for all the great stories, and thank you for your company on Citizen Extra. We continue in Swahili. Stay with us.